with us is Puerto Rico Labor Secretary Carlos Rivera Santiago. Sir, thank you so much for your time. Uh, basically, mm -hmm. we just want to provide an update. There are many, many people um, concerned about, you know, the access to the agency, the status of their unemployment benefits. So why don't we start mm -hmm. by giving an update as to how many people um, have received their benefits and how much have they received? Well, well actually, it's almost uh, five. 500,000 uh, claims or citizens that is receiving right now uh, the benefits is the 75% seven, of the of the old claims are right now are receiving the benefits. Okay. So that's the number actually. And how much is that in money? Uh, actually, it's like $2.9 billion right now uh, from March to, to, to this day. Okay, and how many applications are still pending? Uh, pending is like 60,000 uh, claims. Actually, it's like a 10% like of all the, the quantity of claims. And when do you think you'll get through them? Well, uh, last, last Monday, uh, we just uh, scheduled appointments for 30,000. And uh, I think this Wednesday is going to be another 14 or maybe 50,000 more. Uh, so we're working hard to make this appointment. And uh, the way we're working out is like... Uh, uh, we send an email or a text uh, to the to the citizen because we have uh, in our uh, base data in our data uh, we have uh, a list of all the claims for the oldest one to the risk the most recent and uh, we have all the information so we send an email or a text message the, then we say there uh, we schedule appointment or, or tell them what is the date and the hour approximately we're gonna call him and okay. we attend all the, our citizen by phone it's, it's not uh, in, in person. That was my next question. You led right into it. Um, okay. there's, there's an issue with the phone number that the agency is providing so that people yes. can call. Um, it is eternally busy. It's busy all day long until about 4.15 when the, mm -hmm. you know it kiss, kicks in into the recording that says that your working hours are from 7.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. People mm -hmm. are unable to get through the phone. First of all, is that the only number? Second of all, do you really have a contact, you know, a call center? Because people cannot get through over the phone. Okay. We have a phone number, is, is what the, the phone number we have for the office. And also we have a small call center. But that is, it was insufficient to, to attend all, all, the, all the calls. Uh, we know that. So there's thousands of calls. So the system is not working correctly. So we are changing the system. And what we do is what, how I told you before. Uh, we, send, we have a list of all the claims. Mm -hmm. So we send them a text message. And uh, on our email, and then tell them the date and the hour we're gonna call. So we cannot receive all the call, but we can make the call. So that's the way we're working it out. But but the thing is, if somebody has a claim, how do they mm -hmm. file it if they can't get through over the phone, or if oh, they can't, oh, you know, then send, oh, send an email and it doesn't get answered? Because they, they make the claims by internet. We have a platform, you know, a DOL web page, and uh, they they can make uh, unemployment insurance uh, claims online and then online they can verify the status and they also they know right now if they have some issues and uh also we have in our social networking uh social networks we have uh how to resolve these different issues on one documents they need to resolve that so uh that's the way they they, they can make the claims and that's the, the reason we know we have a list of all the claims that i just filed with the citizens so so that claim is filed through the person's personal page or case okay okay because I, I've been in one of those pages where do they find that if you go to our web page it's gonna call in Spanish servicios en línea or online services uh -huh. and then you're gonna uh, look in there for desempleo or, or file a claim for, for your insurance uh -huh. and then you just apply there and you make a, a profile then you, cr you create a profile uh, with your number social security number and uh, they're gonna uh, ask so many questions about to, to make you qualify or eligible to these benefits. And okay. then you, there, you know the status of the claims. Also, you're gonna know right now the issues you have or any problem okay. with that. So that's the way to make the claim. And uh, if you have an issue, you can resolve that issue. Uh, that's how I told you, we're gonna call you. We're gonna schedule an appointment. So you're gonna know for certain the date and the hour we're gonna call. Okay, so the order is try to make your claim online yep. and then the yes. agency will call you back. That's how yes. it goes. Okay. That's the way it go. Also, if you had to file some documents, there we have an uploader or an assistant where you can just go also in the internet right there and you upload your document and make it online. That's the, the fastest way and the most secure way. 
also, if you don't have uh, internet access, that we have nice. like a different, we have a mailbox. We have different mailbox. Right. Uh, you have our nine uh, regional office when you can just uh, deposit there, uh, just leave the, in, the, in the mailbox uh, your claim or your document or anything you're gonna, you're gonna file. Uh, and that's the other way, but it's gonna be more slower because online mm -hmm. is more quickly. Now, let me ask you, can you please provide the, email, the uh, address um, to reach that? What's your website's address? Uh, I don't have it right now. I have, I have, it's, it's, it's double, double, dot, I think, trabajo, uh, point, PR, uh, point, gov. I think that's the website, but you can find in Google, Departamento del Trabajo Puerto Rico, it's going to say in Google. So you're going to find it, it's there, our main web page. We need to, we need to provide that. There's, um, there's an issue that I've heard a couple of times from different people. Um, mm -hmm. There is a, there are three weeks in May. Yeah. Apparently, we're not paid the week of the second, of the ninth, yep. and of the sixteenth. Can you explain what happened with those three weeks? Are they going to get paid or not? What's the well, deal? Actually, we have good news about that. Uh, last week's that uh, that checks just go out. That weeks go out. That was a, a problem uh, where they make uh, with the with the program and they create an online system and uh, they have some trouble. I don't know why with these weeks particularly. So that does, that pay doesn't go out. But last week they just changed or arranged the the program, and right now uh, they told me that last week they just uh, they put in the in the mail all the checks for that week. So people are just for, receiving it right now. Is that for everybody, or is it for people that don't have any issues or controversial points or something? Because no, that, that was something that the agency is doing, right? Yes, uh, that is going to be uh, for all the person, all people, citizens that you have problem with that week's particularly that you just uh, just told me. It's going to be out. It, we make it automatically. Uh, you just change the program. You arrange that, and the the just the payment just went to the uh, to the post office. Okay, so people should be getting that this week, ideally. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and I'll have to say that uh, also in the states happening. I know there's too many too much mail in the post office, so right now the the postal office is taking a, a while for some uh, uh, deposit the different checks or letters or something, take a, a couple of days more. I understand. Now, have you heard anything about the extension of the PUA benefits? Yes. Um, you know, well, based on what's been said in Congress, is it gonna happen here as well and how much and when and all that? Well, actually we're discussing in Puerto Rico how we're gonna work with that. Uh, as the states, uh, we're making uh, our exam, how we're gonna do it. Right now they told us there's two process or we can have two options. Uh, all states uh, can, uh, federal government will give $300 and uh, states can uh, give another 100. So uh, uh, that's one option. Uh, that's $100, we can use the coronavirus relief uh, act or, or the funds for that reason. We can use $100 in that only give $300. But the, the citizen have to, or the, or the claimant, have to receive a minimum of $100 dollars from uh okay a pua or a ui so but the, the person is going to see only 300 so right now we're making that the analysis of what would be better uh for puerto rico and also for our citizens and we don't have a our decision right now but we are uh, moving forward and definitely they're going to receive some amount of money but we're looking to the two options and going to take the, the best one so it's it's a possibility that people will be able to get four hundred dollars if if everything lines up. Yes. Uh. Well. Yes. We we're looking at uh, the numbers and uh, if we have the uh, available our funds. Also, uh, we we're gonna take in consideration our trust fund and uh, the amount of time we're gonna uh, being given uh, this benefit. So also we have to look uh, all around uh, the the health of, in some way of this trust fund. Uh, so we're making this analysis. Uh, we also Puerto Rico has a, a fiscal board. So, so there's some uh, fiscal issues we have to talk with them and other decisions to make. And when would you know, you know, when this would happen? Well, well, hopefully, I'm I, I looking forward to have a decision these this weeks because uh, we were talking this with FEMA. Uh, FEMA is going to, uh, we have to make an MOU with FEMA also as part of the, of the executive order that have told us. So uh, we are in communication with them. Uh, last Friday, I just talked with FEMA. Uh, I hope so. Maybe tomorrow I'll have another call, a phone call with them. Uh, but I ho I'm looking forward to this um, this week. If it's not a late, then maybe in the beginning of the next week, we have to make a decision and begin to work in that direction. To start when? In September? 
Uh, well, th yes, definitely. We, we, I think we're going to begin with the process in September. They tell me that also we have to make some administrative arrangement. So make to begin working with the uh, new benefits. And uh, it's going to be from uh, the, the claim of well, the claimants going to have the benefit from August 1st. And they told us it's going to be to December 26th. Okay. Uh, so we'll be retroactive, we to, actually. Yeah, yes, correctly. So it's going to be retroactive. So it's no problem with that. Uh, but we had to also look around our administrative process and how to looking forward. Uh, right now, we're also working with a new platform for PUA. It's going to be Fast PUA. Uh, they are uh, using uh, this same platform or program is using other states. And now uh, we're looking to, uh, in a couple of weeks also, to use it to make more quickly or automatically the process. Okay. Uh, the, the benefit of this process or, or this platform uh, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a validation with uh, Department of Treasury immediately. So any uh, person or citizen that claims some salary is gonna check in there, and uh, they don't have to file any other report or any other document to validate the information. So more quickly for the citizen, also uh, you're gonna make a direct deposit. Uh, so the person just have her bank account, route number, and then it's gonna be more quickly. Now, you just led right into my next question. You said in mm -hmm. an interview last week that you were working together with the Treasury Department. Yes, right? in that way, yeah. Mm -hmm. What you're working on, can you please explain yes. what it is that you're doing with that agency and how it'll benefit people? How well, will it make mm -hmm. it easier for people to get their money? Well, uh, most of the people of, from PUA uh, are personal people just work for themselves, uh, have to help her, his own business and uh, the Department of Treasury have a list of, of the business in Puerto Rico who's re registered in that agency. So it's more quickly if you just check with the uh, data that they already have uh, Department of Treasury of, of all the persons that are registered as a business or legal business in Puerto Rico and also uh, they have uh, a list of, of the information of all the uh, the taxes, uh, the salary of this person, uh, social security number, uh, any kind of stuff uh, uh, or information about of the fiscal or, or, or economic report of that of that person. Okay. So uh, in that way, uh, we the person or, or the citizen will make the claim online, and uh, in that system, it's gonna go to in in the internet. It's gonna validate the information with the uh, data that already have the Department of Treasury. I'm gonna check. Uh, salary is gonna check is registered as a business in Puerto Rico, so it's gonna be make it immediately. So in 24 hours or maybe 48 hours, uh, a citizen would receive uh, our, if 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 uh, if approved, is mm -hmm. gonna receive a direct deposit in 48 hours approximately. So it's very quickly uh, and it's more easy than make a payment like a check and go to the U.S. Postal Office and take all these things. Right. So that means that the platform at the Labor Department will be working with the platform at the Treasury yes. Department. Okay. Yes, it's going to okay. work together, and, uh -huh. and, that, and that also we help for fraud, uh, any, any possible claim of fraud, we're going to detect it immediately. So uh, is that ready to go, or are you going to be, you know, testing it out and possibly having problems again? Because that was an issue, um, you know, early on know. in, the, in well, the shutdown. Well, uh, actually, we were not going to announce any, uh, any initial of, of the platform until we are, are completely ready. And uh, we know that the platform is going to support the, the amount of claims. Uh, so maybe we're going to do first a soft opening and not announce it and, and then try it with, a, with different claims and look how the system works. And then when we are confident about our platform, uh, then we're going to announce it uh, for the public general. Okay. And when do you think that'll be? Well, we're, we're working forward that uh, I think in a couple of weeks right now in August, maybe, uh, maybe next week, we're going to try a soft opening. And we're looking forward that in this September, we have to begin full with the platform. And that means that you'll have the benefits of the $400 or are you going to have everybody who's on PUA using uh, grading into that? Well, uh, we'll have to use, uh, well, it's going to be the new claims for PUA, for PUA. And also the, the people just receiving benefit by PUA also we're going to be in this platform, but it's going to be exclusively for PUA. The only reason I ask is because I also know of people who have told me that they've tried as hard as they could mm -hmm. to get their direct deposit mm -hmm. to happen, but they're still getting paper checks. So uh, yes, apparently there's because an they're that all no, the, the old system right is right now up, uh, working. Uh, they need a void check, and it's like a, a process a little too slow. But in this system, the the person just gonna write down 
uh, in the in the website uh, the uh, bank account, the route number, and it's going to be immediately. So there is no tro uh, problem with that. So it's it, it's if approve it in tw in twenty four hours, maybe forty eight hours, they have a direct deposit in his account. Okay. Now, um, you know, you said that you have a small, you, a, little, a little earlier in the conversation, you mm -hmm. said you have a small customer service center. Yeah. How small is that? I mean, how many people do you have working to, you know, take care of all these claims? Because it's obviously a larger number than usual for the agency, right? Yes, definitely. Uh, for example, uh, in a typical year, uh, we have 40, 47,000 claims in around in the 12 months of the years. Uh, from March to this day, we have more than six, almost 600 or more. So thousands, 600,000. So it's way too much. We have only like 1,000 employees. So, uh, so uh, it's very difficult to answer all the phones. Uh, we have in a central office, we have uh, maybe like 30, uh, 30 uh, employees for phones, but also we have regional office that also everyone in, 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 in the old days is to call in some way, uh, answer also the phone. But the, the trouble we have is if we answer the phone, we are not uh, processing the claims. So we have to focus our work to process all the claims so being processed and, and if any trouble with any claims, we're going to call them. Uh, but if you attend all the, all the phone calls, we're going to have to stop the, the claim process to attend all, only what is doubts and it will not resolve in any claims. Do you do understand the frustration of the people that I know. Uh, yeah. Yes. Agency and people need this money to, to live, to survive. I know. So, you know, I know. What do you say to that? Well, I think uh, we're using this technology to, to, to move more faster because I know if we go into one to one person, uh, we're going to finish in the time it's supposed to finish. So what we do is giving some certainty to a citizen, uh, sending a text message, an email, uh, and telling maybe next week's Thursday, we're going to give you a call between one o'clock to five o'clock in the afternoon. And, all, and the citizen just will know, well, they're going to call me this day in that hour. So that's when trying to do right now to organize our work to have to be better and uh, to resolve this claim in a, in a more quickly way okay and that and, and that is happening Calls yes that's what i'm doing that's what we're doing right now for example daily uh we attend more than 1500 uh, claims uh, with this system or more so yes we're calling people and uh and we're doing that right now all right, so you've had a couple of things happening since you came in because you've been mm -hmm. you know, in the post for what, two months, three months? Uh, yes, I just be began here on June 18. Okay, and so, you know, what's your general take on, you know, the agency's performance and where do you see it going? Well, uh, I think right now uh, we're making some improve. I'm not satisfied with improve, but I have to be honest. Uh, I think the, the first uh, problem or the big problem here in the agency, if we have an old system, all electronic system are very old. I know that's happening in all the states also, uh, but our system is for 1988 and it's going to be 32 years old. Uh, nobody, past secretaries or different persons that work here don't, don't get worried about uh, change the system and uh, have uh, a system that responds quickly to the system. Uh, it's a manual system. So mm -hmm. it's like being in the 80s, trying to work in 2020. So uh, I think that's our first concern. That's the reason we're trying to pass PUA and welcome to this new platform through PUA. Now mm -hmm. we are also looking to improve what is UI or unemployment insurance. Because it's more complex because as in, it's in insurance, uh, there's so many uh, possibilities or different ways that you can be uh, approved or disapproved in this insurance. So it's more complex to make a platform. I know, we are asking to the Department of Labor, Federal Department of Labor, uh, recommendation also, because I know that this is happening in different states that have the same problem. Uh, and we're looking to our platform uh, right now, uh, different option to get a better technology uh, for unemployment and try to move forward in that, in that, in that part. So does that mean that there will be an investment in technology at some point? Yes. D yes. Uh, also, our uh, fiscal board assigned almost like, like 10 million to technology for the uh, for Department of Labor. And definitely we had to uh, move to technology to work with these uh, claims. If not, we're going to not finish. Uh, for example, right now, uh, if you have a partial 
uh, claim is that that's for an employee who work uh, part time or or, or is was uh, working just a couple of hours. It's not uh, fully un unemployment. Uh, right. They have to to print out a paper and go to his employer and his employer had to write it down and sign the amount of hours. So very archaic uh, system. Uh, and, and we are now, we are in the 2020 and we're working like, it's like the, the 80s. Right. So uh, that's our main concern. And that, that, that 10 million, when was that um, assigned and when do you think you'll be using it? The 10 million that you said that, that was assigned to the Department of Labor? Well, actually, uh, just was recently assigned from the uh, fiscal board, and uh, we right now we had to make an assessment uh, first of all of, of the time of program or, or, or the what program is going to benefit our unemployment insurance, and look around with different companies uh, to know well if uh, the, with different company uh, about this uh, this uh, this on insurance uh, unemployment insurance and look around how it's going to work it out. So right now we are, are trying to make our specification what we need and, uh, in, and then call these different companies uh, to a proposal uh, to the Department of Labor and then, and then uh, contract them if, if it's possible. So you'll open an RFQ, you mean? If yeah, you... it's probably that, that's gonna do. Right now we have an RFP, a request proposal, uh, okay. but it's a general request of proposal. And uh, I think we need, and, and that's a great proposal it was before I arrived. Uh, but I, I think we have we have to focus right now in our main concern that is unemployment insurance, sure. and we have to make a specific RFP for unemployment insurance uh, because I think that's the more uh, critical phase uh, right now. So we have to work it out. Yes, it's going to be RFP. Elections are coming up in November. Do you foresee this happening anytime before the end of the year? Uh, you know, or at least get the ball rolling. Do technology. Well, to be very sincere, honest with you, uh, this is not going to be completed uh, this uh, in December. Uh, I, we know that the, the complex of this program, and it's going to take for a while, maybe nine months, 10 months. It's going to take some time. Maybe I will begin the process, and that's, I think, what yeah. my goal is that. Mm -hmm. My goal is to, to begin with the process. So we have in a couple, maybe in a couple of months, maybe, maybe in February, March, we have a complete program for unemployment insurance. So that's we're gonna move um, and then also uh, we don't know what is gonna happen with the COVID-19 right now. So right. we don't know what is gonna be uh, uh, in this couple of months. The other uh, situation we have is I cannot uh, just shut it down. The system that I just, I just have now uh, to move to other because if to do that, I have to stop all the claims. So it's gonna be people affected and people that will not receive any payment uh, if I do that. So it's like a change the tire of a car be, when it's running in right. the same time. So it's something like that. So you would foresee handing off the project to whoever? Probably, probably. I, I don't know what's gonna happen. Uh, my goal is gonna be to begin with the process and trying to make advance as fast as possible. And I don't know what is gonna happen in November or in December, uh, but that's my goal. So begin the process and make the step more quickly. I, I just can't. I have one final question. It has to do with the issue of fraud. Mm -hmm. uh, what is happening with the cases that have been reported? How much money has the agency been able to get back? And are there any other major cases, you know, that you're looking out for? Well, actually, uh, we, when you just arrived, uh, we were concerned about different claims and uh, we make a tax force also, a tax force is, uh, this task force has police officer from Puerto Rico. We also have uh, OIG office inspector general for federal government, OIG local OIG, uh, FBI, uh, also uh, federal prosecution. Uh, also, we talk with federal prosecutor, and uh, we have like a this task for working with the different claims. Uh, right now, they are making an audit also of all the claims and all the process uh, related to these claims. Uh, there are different kind of fraud we are de detecting right now. Uh, there also a uh, problem I think in the when they uh, the initial with this uh, POA program. Uh, mostly that the, the citizen were not, uh, they don't have the, the information uh, needed to know who qualify. For example, uh, we have public, um, public employees uh, filing from PUA when they not qualify because they're receiving his, his payment and, and, and they're not qualifying. And most of them, they have a, like a side job or part time or some business in the side uh, apart from, the, from being a public employee and they just apply thinking they will receive the benefit. So that's something we're working. Uh, I think last week, last Friday, no, no, 
last Friday now before last Friday two weeks ago uh, we we received amount we we collect uh, I think it was two point six million dollars returned by citizen that uh, they saying they don't know they not qualify and uh, when we look, begin to post the information in the social network and the first interview the people just begin to re to return most of the checks and the money. So uh, I think that's going to be positive in that way. But there is right now different investigation that different law enforcement are making right now. Do you not? Do you have any idea how many cases are are being? Uh, well, I, we have. To be honest, we have more than like three hundred or four hundred allegations of different uh, possible illegal action. Uh, so I don't have control of that. I, I know that the law enforcement is investigating any of uh, all of that claims. So there is, I again said there's multiple investigation right now. Uh, there's going to be also some arrests that have, have been in the news. People are just trying to check uh, false checks or false identification uh, for changing a check. Uh, uh, they also, the identity theft. Uh, so there are also people trying to steal uh, social security numbers and information just to make a false claim. So right. they have a different kind of fraud right now. Mr. Secretary, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it and we'll be in touch again soon. Thank you for the opportunity.